Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog and in today's video I'm very excited to be talking about and showing you how to use and how to maximize your usage of the new iPad 10th generation. This is a total redesign and a basically brand new price point for this iPad with some great new accessories that we'll be talking about in this video. Anyway, in this video I'm going to be showing you the very basics of how to use this if you're new to this device and then I'll cover some of the new accessories and some more advanced tips and tricks later on. And you can jump through the different chapters down below if you wanna to go to a specific section of the video. So this iPad no longer has your home button, which means all of your functions are going to be happening from the screen and from the buttons around the device. So to turn on the iPad, you can press the power button, which is at the top or the side of the iPad, depending on how you're holding it. But you can also just tap the screen and it will wake up just like that. Now from there, you can swipe up and it'll allow you to enter in your passcode, but you can also hold your finger to the touch ID with that little icon and that will unlock your iPad. Now, if you wanna add a fingerprint, you can go into your settings and touch ID and passcode. And from there, you can add more fingerprints. Now, once you're inside the iPad, everything happens with gestures. So to go home from an application, you simply swipe up quickly, just like that, swipe up. Now, if you want to go back and forth between recent applications, you can swipe at the bottom of the iPad left and right, and this will take you to your recent applications, which is a very handy feature to quickly switch around. Now, if you want to see all your recent applications to go back to one uh, and see exactly what it looks like, you can swipe up, but hold instead of quickly swiping away, and this will show you all of your recent applications. So if we open up a couple more apps, just like that, you can see that they'll all pop up in this view. Now from here, you have a few different options. If you wanna force close the app, you can swipe up and you can dismiss it, and this will close the app, which you don't really need to do, but if an app isn't working, you can do that. You can also use multiple fingers to swipe away multiple at once, and you can also drag one app over another app and create a multitasking window just like that, so you can have two apps open side by side. Now, if you wanna get into your control center to change quick actions, that's gonna be your top right-hand corner, swiping down just like that. From there, you have quick settings from brightness to volume to um, sound, your camera, Wi-Fi, things like that. If you wanna customize that, you go to settings and control center, and from there, you can add or remove certain toggles. For instance, I like having a dark mode toggle on there as well as screen recording, but you can have it be whatever you want in that customization setting. To see your notifications, you swipe down from the middle. And again, the same thing goes if your iPad is vertical, top right, and middle. Now, if you wanna take a screenshot, you're gonna hold down the power button and the up volume button at the same time, and it will take a screenshot. Now, once you have a screenshot, you can tap on it. If you press the pen icon, you're able to draw on it you can change your pen, stuff like that. And then you can share it with somebody or delete it. Or you can use the new live text feature by clicking that. And you can highlight text on that image and you can translate it, copy, paste it, things like that. That's a really handy feature that you might use for addresses or translations, things like that. And, and then you can always click done, which gives you the option to save it to your photos, save it to your files, save it to a quick note, or you can copy and delete. So if you wanna copy and delete this, you can then paste it in you know, a, a Word document or a text message, something like that. So that's really handy. Now, if you want to get to Siri, you hold down the power button and that pulls up Siri down there. And if you wanna power off or restart your device, you're going to press the up volume button, the down volume button, and then you hold the power button and that will bring you to your power off option, which then you slide that and it will shut down your iPad just like that. Now, if you've been around an iPad for a while, you might remember the old multi-touch gestures, which you can still do. So five fingers to close an app, four fingers to go back to an application and switch between them, and four fingers to swipe up as well. Now, next I wanna talk about stylus options in case you wanna use this iPad with a stylus. 
So this supports the Apple Pencil first generation. So unfortunately, it does not support the second gen Apple Pencil. So you can get the Apple Pencil for $99 or sometimes cheaper, or you can use a variety of third-party stylus options as well, which I'll talk about in a second. But this year, because the iPad has USB-C instead of a lightning port connector, you can't just plug the Apple Pencil into the iPad. So if you buy a new Apple Pencil, Apple will give you the appropriate adapter that allows you to plug this into a USB-C port. So by doing that, you plug in your Apple Pencil into this port, and then to connect it to your iPad, you have to use the USB-C cable that is included in the box, and then plug that into your pencil. And then from there, it will give you a Bluetooth pairing request, which then you can pair this to your iPad. And you can see it is now paired 100%. It'll give me some information about the Apple Pencil. And then it'll make you go through all these scribble options, which can be kind of annoying if you don't care about scribble. But then you can start using your iPad. And you can tap anywhere from your lock screen or notification center to do a quick note. So this is a note. Now, as I mentioned, if you don't want to spend the $99 on the Apple Pencil, there are a couple other options. Logitech makes one called the Crayon, which is between $70 and $80, which has a USB-C port and works in a very similar manner to the Apple Pencil. So it's basically just a cheaper method that isn't quite as sleek, but you can use it pretty much just the same. And you can also get these very cheap ones, like $25, and I have made a video about these in the past, and these just connect automatically to the iPad and have about 90% of the functionality. So that's also an option too, if you want to use um, a pencil that has USB-C for charging, um, but save a lot of money. So those are your Apple Pencil and stylus options for this iPad. Now in terms of cases and keyboards, this is where the iPad gets really good, especially this year, and this is another new feature. So Apple now has the Magic Keyboard Folio, which is basically their previous Magic Keyboard case, but now has a detachable keyboard. Now this has a couple advantages. One, it means that you can take off the iPad, but still have some back protection and still have that stand, which is very nice but it also gives you a better keyboard because now it has a function row, something that Apple's keyboards have always lacked. Now this isn't perfect, it has limited angles still and still adds a decent amount of thickness and weight to your iPad and it's very expensive. But if you're just looking for a super solid keyboard, this is great and it has the trackpad and it is detachable. So this is just a, a super cool and interesting product that Apple has brought to the market. Whether or not it's right for you and your budget, it's for you to decide, but that is this case. And you can see with it all closed up that it's still about the thickness of the regular Magic Keyboard. And it has the Apple logo up front with a little bit of branding and text. And you can flip around the keyboard to the back and use your iPad like normal. Now, if you're not using your keyboard or you don't need a keyboard or anything this expensive, ESR has some great cases for the iPad and and I love ESR cases and they are the sponsor of this episode. So the first of these two cases is the rebound magnetic case. This is great because it just attaches with the magnets onto the back of your iPad. Doesn't need any type of clamps or, or borders or anything to lock it in. It just uses magnets and it keeps your iPad very slim and portable. Now this comes in six colors, which is fantastic to go with the great new colors of your iPad 10th gen. And it has the trifold design that will allow you to use this as kind of a writing position with the Apple Pencil or a viewing position for watching content or browsing. Now secondly, there is the Ascend Hybrid case, which is a bit of a bumper case that still shows off the color of your iPad, which is great, but gives it a lot more protection around the edges. Now this case has that trifold design panel that allows you to put it in a nice viewing angle, but you can also detach that panel for using this just as your standard case for everyday usage, which is really convenient and kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So if you want to check out either of these cases, you can get 10% off using my code as well as 10% more using the discount code on Amazon. And you can check out the link in the description for that. 
So there's a couple new features with this iPad. One would be the addition, as I've mentioned before, of USB-C instead of Lightning. This of course means that you can use the reversible USB-C charger, but you can also connect these very handy hubs, which connects to the iPad and gives you USB, SD, another USB-C, a headphone jack, a micro SD card, as well as HDMI. And I'll leave this linked down below if you're interested. Another very cool feature is the ability to charge up your Apple devices with this. So for instance, if I get a USB-C to Apple Watch, I can charge my Apple Watch or my AirPods with this. So this is really great if you wanna steal some power from your iPad to charge up your other devices in a pinch. Very, very handy. Now there's also the new front facing camera which is in the center for this iPad, which is the very first time this has happened on an iPad, which is pretty sweet. So if you go into the camera and you put it on front facing camera, you can see that it no longer shows you at an awkward angle. It is now front and center, which is honestly just so much better. And this will be really great for calls. So that especially if you're typing, it's not gonna show your fingers popping up in front of the camera. Now there's also the center stage feature. So you can go super wide angle with this camera and really show off an entire workspace but also means that when you're on a FaceTime call, it'll move back and forth and kind of follow you on the call. But if you're in FaceTime, you can go into your control center and then you click this little toggle up in the top left and you turn center stage on or off. And you can do that in other applications as well, such as Zoom, so that you can have it follow you. Or not, depending on what you want. So you can see that it'll follow me around as I move. Okay, so now I wanna get into some tips and tricks of using this device. So one interesting tip and kinda of cool, you can have your iPad actually read an article to you by swiping down with two fingers. Apple Fitness Plus is coming to iPhone. No Apple Watch needed except for Christian Zibrib, October 20th, 2022. Okay, so I'll stop that. But you can see this is a feature called spoken content and if you go into your accessibility settings and spoken content, you can turn this on and you can change such things as the speaking rate and the pronunciations and, and all these kind of features. It's interesting, but it kind of turns your screen, whatever you're reading into spoken content, which can certainly be very handy depending on what you're doing. Now, the second feature that I really like is the ability to not only scan documents with this iPad, but do it quickly from your control center. So you go to control center and you hold down on the note, you can do scan document and so, Let's open up Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. Bring the iPad above it like this. And just like that, I have started a scan, which then I can rotate and crop. And I can get a nice scan of a document just like that, which then I can edit and annotate with my Apple Pencil, or I can share into an application um, or I can do a lot of things, print it out, stuff like that. Now one really cool one is the ability to move multiple applications at once. So by doing this, you have to put your device into wiggle mode and then you can just tap multiple apps and they will accumulate together. And then you go to a different page and drop them and they will all move together, which is super nice. Now another really cool feature is the ability to use your spacebar as a cursor. So for instance, if I'm saying hello, and I have a typo, I can hold the space bar and move my cursor back and I can make a revision or do whatever I need right there. That's great. And there's a lot of different ways to multitask on the iPad. I showed you one earlier. Now another one would be that when you're in an application, you simply tap the three dots at the top of your screen and that'll give you several options. One would be split view and that'll send that app to one side and then you can very conveniently choose the other app that you wanna have open. So let's just say voice memos. So now I have two apps side by side, just like that. But that's not all. You can bring up another application on top. If you kind of drag it in the middle, it'll move to the side. So then you have a third app open and you can even add multiple apps to the side and you can swipe between them and it basically turns the side of your iPad into a little iPhone and you can drag that off and drag it back on. You can also click those three dots and you can full screen it. That's great. 
So let's say I have a YouTube video playing and I exit the video and then I bring up that previous multitasking. Now I have four applications open at the same time, just like that. Pretty cool, pretty cool. You might not need to use this all the time, but it is an option that I like nonetheless. Now there's a fun new feature in the Contacts app. At the very top, there'll be an option for duplicates. And if you click that, it'll show you your duplicate contacts and give you the ability to merge those contacts. So now there's several new features in the Mail app as well. So you tap and hold on the send button and this allows you to customize when you send it. So you can do a delayed send, but say you send it, you can hit undo send at the bottom and it will undo that, which is a really cool feature. And you can customize how long it'll wait for that in the settings under mail. And you can choose how long it waits for the undo send, which is great. And for the past couple of years, you can now edit your home screen just by holding down and you can add widgets by clicking the plus button and you can add your favorite widgets by tapping and holding on one and then dragging it to your home screen and you can add different widgets and you can download apps such as widget smith to create your own custom widgets to have a really personal home screen and if you ever need to edit any of these such as the weather you can hold and tap and hold click edit weather and then you can change the settings such as location so do my location and it should update to Boston. There we go. And then lastly, in the Wi-Fi settings, if you click on a Wi-Fi network and click on the little eye, you can see the password for that network by tapping on it and putting in your passcode, it'll show you the Wi-Fi password, which is awesome. So anyway, that is the new iPad 10th generation. It's a really solid device with a lot of good features. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and I will see you in the next video.